Hello and welcome to the video. This is a video about iNav 4.0 specifically for fixed wing. Now for those of you that have been watching the channel for a long time, you'll know that iNav is something that I've been dealing with for a very long time and it's something that I personally trust. I tend to put iNav in lots of models and I use the auto launch function an awful lot. In fact, the recent Maiden that I did of my new Ranger T1 from He Wing was using the auto launch function, and surprise, surprise, it worked absolutely flawlessly. However, with iNav 4.0 come out, I've had a few questions, people saying, what are the differences? How do you set it up? What do I need to know when I'm setting up compared to iNav 3.0? And I'm making this video to answer those specific questions because actually, in terms of how you set it up, it's better to think of iNav 4.0 for fixed wing as more like iNav 3.1 than iNav 4. In terms of the setup, the setup is identical in all the basic pieces and including the maiden process. So the iNav 3.0 series that I did last year is still exactly the same process that I would use to set up an iNav 4.0 plane. So if you're about to set up a fixed wing with iNav 4.0 and you are used to setting it up on iNav 3.0, even going back to 2.6, it's pretty much the same process. There's only very small changes. But if you set up a model with iNav 3.0, then you know what? You'd be very, very comfortable with iNav 4.0. I use exactly the same process. If, however, you are brand new to all of this and you've never set up iNav 4.0 and you're about to do it on your first fixed wing, check out my iNav 3.0 playlist. It's exactly the same steps. But let me jump onto the computer and show you uh, how I very, very quickly would set up a flight controller to prep it to go into a fixed wing on iNav 4 if you want to see some of those very small differences. So here we have a Matek 411WSE that I'm about to flash with iNav. Got it plugged into the computer. iNav uh, configurator is downloaded and ready to go. So here on the computer, we can see it's connected to COM5. Everything looks good. Standard update stuff. Let's go into firmware flasher. One of the new features is you can search. So we know it's a 411. So now it will give us all the names that just include 411. Fantastic. So we'll just click the standard one. Make sure that we're on 4.0. I'd always select full chip arrays, load the firmware online, and click flash firmware. Now that's going to go through the entire process as normal, and then we can go and change everything. As I said in the introduction, there isn't really any difference between setting up 4.0 and 3.0. And in fact, for things like fixed wing in particular, setting up iNav in 4.0 is actually very similar to things like 2.6 and earlier as well. So the iNav dev team have done a fantastic job on keeping the experience very, very similar. Okay, so let's go on the computer, see where we're up to. About halfway through flashing, there we go. Verifying programming successful. We'll give it a moment just to finish rebooting and to be happy. Once the flight controller is happy, then we'll click connect. Now, we're going to uh, say that this is an airplane uh, without a tail. Uh, that tends to be what I uh, set these things up for. Uh, it'll just be the same process, irrespective of what kind of fixed wing model that you are going to plug it into. Now, by clicking that, we'll have got lots of different options here uh, that have been kind of pre-set up for us. Now at the moment, as you can see, as I move the board around on the desk, we have the clean flight box, and I love the way it still says clean flight, uh, harking back to the origins and the reason why we have things like iNav and beta flight. Standard setup stuff, we're going to go through this super quick. We're going to go down here on the left hand side. Calibration is the same as always, so we're going to calibrate the accelerometer. We need to put it in each of the positions as flat as you can, so we're going to click on each of them in turn try and keep it still it doesn't have to be exactly at 90 degrees as close as you can is good this is why I do this process outside of the model wherever I can because it's an awful lot easier doing it like this where um, I can actually do it like on the edge of the desk as I'm having to do now now with the last one done, it says calibration finish. So we're going to click OK and then we'll click save and reboot. 
that's important just so the board knows exactly all the orient orientation around. Uh, so, so far it's exactly the same as every other version of iNav. We'll go into the mixer and we will um, load and apply the mixer. At the moment there is a servo mixer down here. It's set it up ready to go. We have different options of flying wing. So flying wing with differential thrust and stuff. We'll just hit the default, click load and apply and that will save and reboot as well. And what that will do is it will configure the servo outputs and all the mixes we need so that that is ready as well. Again, you don't put any mixes for iNav on your radio. It's all done inside the flight controller. And now on the screen we have, there we go, we have our flying wing. And it's when you've configured the mixer that actually changes this initial setting. In terms of the outputs, that's the last thing we do is turn those on. Uh, but here you can set your ESC protocol for a fixed wing model. I leave a standard ESC refresh rate and servo refresh. I keep a standard as well, unless I'm using digital servos and then I might go up to 100 hertz. But right now the outputs are off and we can just see that we have the two servos configured for both sides of the model and that's where you plug those servos in. Last job of the whole setup is to enable the servo output. In terms of ports, now this is where you need to go and have a look uh, for the wiring diagram for the particular board that you're looking at. So for here's the F411 WSE. I use this one a lot, it's a cracking little board. We can see for example that the Matek GPS is plugged into TX and RX1 or that's where it should be. That's UART1. So we'll turn that into the GPS stuff. And then you may have an additional thing on here, like there may be this um, option to configure and change things here for, so for example, this is going into uh, the control stuff. So the transmitter ST1, so I'm guessing that is soft serial one it's gonna be set at. Yeah, soft serial one. And this is why I love the Matek boards. It's all just laid out for you. You don't have to guess. So serial receiver on UART2 and uh, IRC tramp. So serial receiver on UART2 and then whichever one you're going to do. So save and reboot that. So that's going to configure all the ports. We need to configure the ports before we go any further because if you try and then turn on things like I want to use GPS and things in configuration, it isn't going to work. Now in configuration, it's exactly the same as loads of other videos that you've probably seen. The only thing I'd do in here is turn on the GPS for navigation, turn on the use of Galileo satellites, and then I also like to have continuously trim servos on fixed wing. That's something that's been in iNav for a little while. It's actually one of the things that I asked for, so I'm quite fond of this sort of thing. What this does is as you're flying along, it trims the servo so that when you go in manual or acro mode, they're all ready to rock and roll. I also permanently enable launch mode. So let's save and reboot that. So as you can see, it doesn't take too long. It's exactly the same. There's no real difference between this and my iNav 3.0. So we've done configuration, fail safe, uh, in a moment, you should see that the GPS will appear here as red, and that's because it isn't installed. But we will say, we'll set it as return to home, save and reboot. That's kind of the whole point, in my humble opinion, of using iNav. You get a proper, reliable return to home. Then we have pitch tuning, advanced tuning. Now, advanced tuning is quite handy tab. Lots of pilots I know don't really go in here, but there's a ton of stuff that actually shows you exactly how some of the clever things are gonna be laid out. And one of the things they've done in iNav 4.0 is they have grouped stuff together. So rather than it being the kind of big list of settings. So for example, here you can see that the fixed wing auto launch settings are all in here. See my video on auto launch for how I configure all these, the fixed wing navigation settings, the cruise throttle, all that stuff. Um, return to home settings, how the height is handled, loads and loads and loads of stuff in here. Really, really handy. So let's carry on. Uh, receiver, standard stuff. You're going to want to match the order to the radio that you have. The default for lots of things these days is AETR. 
Uh, I still have some legacy stuff that uses TAER, which is the spectral way of doing it. Modes. Now, modes in iNav4 have changed a little bit. Um, they group them. So you can see here we have ones to do with arming, ones to do with flight modes, ones to do with navigation modes. Yeah. So what we're going to do is uh, we're going to add a couple of things. So I always have arming on channel five, which is auxiliary one. And then I usually have on a plane, which is going to be auxiliary six. I usually have horizon because that's the mode it comes out of auto launch into. I usually have manual as the middle. I might have acro as the top. And then you also have all these navigation modes that you can choose, return to home, uh, waypoint missions, uh, all this really cool stuff. So that is how I would set that, so save that. The only other things I would do is come into on-screen display and drag and move things around as you would normally, just like you would with any other system to kind of put it how you want it to be. Um, you know, there's no real hard and fast rule. It is what kind of works for you. You can turn things on and off. In iNav4, as I mentioned in a video, uh, you can also, if you're using DJI HDFBV stuff, hide the unsupported elements, which is great, but we're using analog uh, here for this. The only thing I would say is you do need to go into Font Manager and upload one of these fonts. There are some new characters for some of the new features in 4.0. And if you don't do this, you will get an invalid font warning. It doesn't take long to do. Worthwhile potentially playing with all of the different font types and seeing which one is gonna suit you. I know some of my friends who have less good eyesight like the uh, bold and clarity versions. So with that, at this point, we pretty much done most of it, to be honest. I would be happy at this point to connect it up to uh, the model and start playing with stuff. But hopefully you can see here that in terms of setting up iNav 4.0 on something like this flight controller, it looks, feels and smells very much like all the previous versions of iNav. And that's a great thing. It makes the setup an awful lot easier. So again, I'll put a link down below to my iNav 3.0. If you are going to be setting up iNav 4.0 on a fixed wing, follow exactly the same process and you'll be great. Thank you for spending your time today watching that video. You can find me in all the usual places on social media. And if you're trying to learn about a subject, then check out the playlist. All of my videos are organized into easy to follow playlists that if you're trying to learn a topic, will take you from the basics right the way through to some pretty advanced stuff.